Computer English Ministry. Um, you are going to participate to our worship, Lord. Uh, as we rise up <laughs> uh, with your feet.
Father, you are awesome, and the earth is filled with your glory. How can we not see how great, how mighty you are, all the beauty that's in this world, and it has your signature on it, Lord God. Just like we were created in your image, we were created to worship you, Lord God, and I thank you that we have a church like uh, on our English ministry where we can gather and we can give praise to you where we can hear your word and I thank you Lord God that even though we're unworthy even though we are sinners redeemed sinners I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ whose sacrifice allows us to come in here boldly and make our petitions when we pray Lord Jesus Many of us have needs, and we put these at the cross, at the foot of the cross. We put up our burdens, we put our sins there. It's too much for us, Lord God. It's too much for us, Jesus. But we know you will lighten that load, and that you'll give us the strength to go on. And even with everything that's horrible and violent going on in this world, assassinations, mass shootings, wars, conflicts, starvation. You are there with us. I pray that we would endure these hardships, but not just survive them, but carry on those ideas, those beliefs, those behaviors that you want us to, those that true followers of Christ would practice. Help us to forgive even when it's so hard to. But we know, Lord Jesus, that you have forgiven us. I thank you, Lord God, for so many people who are serving this church, for the worship team, for the, the children's ministry, for the people who set up the chairs and who put away the tables, who print out the bulletins, who do so much, Lord God. And they do these good works because you've put them before them, and they do this because that's how they glorify you. And I pray, Lord God, that we be cognizant of how we glorify you in all things that we do. We also um, pray for Jaira as he comes up here today to deliver your message, that he'd be the very oracle of God and speak the words that need to be spoken, not a word more, not a word less, that it be said in love and with compassion, with conviction, and that people would be moved, that our eyes would be open, our ears unplugged, and our hearts softened, that we could be your true servants. I thank you, Lord God, so much for all who have gathered here. And for those who have not, please give them the strength that they can go, the motivation that they can come again, and help us to remember those who are having such a difficult time, that we would pray for them, and we pray for them earnestly. I thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, please stand up again and look around. Just, uh, we are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again.
welcome to our visitors and friends. Is there anybody here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? Okay. Yeah, well, if you'd like to, you can stand up and give, give us your name and tell us where you're from. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Anybody else? That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you for the reference and prayer of uh, Stephen Jakes. Okay. <laughs> There's another name here, but <laughs> next week's reference and prayer will be given by Justin. Okay. Today's sermon will be delivered by Jaira. Okay. And uh, small group fellowship will be continued after the service. Saturday Bible study. Uh, started summer vacation from June 25th and will resume on August 27th. Um, the Sunday school team needs help rearranging the study room. If you'd like to help, please come to the choir room on the fourth floor by uh, 125. I guess that would be uh, next Sunday. Uh, vision meeting for July will be held after the small group fellowship today. Okay, before we call uh, Jaira to preach, uh, we, uh, I have little announcements about uh, the outreach that will be uh, held on August uh, 15th. Now, all the details are written in the paper that has been distributed. Uh, and if I briefly explain about this. So first, what we are going to do is we are going to depart from here at 9. And we will first go to Kimje, uh, Kimje Kumsan Kue, uh, which is on the second page, number five. So we will go there first. Uh, we are, uh, and then we will see the L-shaped church. Uh, and then after that, we will go to Jeonju, Hanok village. And then we are going to have tour there. And then we can spend time with our families and do some activities there. I mean, after we have lunch at the Jeonju. And then we will see all the um, schools and hospitals and then all, the, all those facilities that uh, missionaries from um, the uh, uh, facilities that was built by missionaries a long time ago here in Korea. And after we visit this place, um, we will come back here around uh, 5. And then all the details are written in the, this paper, please, so please uh, take a look at it. And then if you are willing to uh, join outreach, please write your name uh, at the, on the paper at the back. Um, and yeah, uh, that's it for the announcement. And uh, to share uh, Haim's information, he, uh, he is, uh, practicing uh, using hearing aid, uh, but he needs another test uh, this coming weekend. Um, he needs to be hospitalized and then take a gen uh, genetic genetic test to see if he needs if he really needs surgery or uh, not. So, so please uh, pray for that too. Uh, all right. So, let me sh shall we call Jaira? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Are you happy this afternoon? Yes. Are you ready to listen to the word of God this afternoon? Yes. Can you look to the person next to you and ask the person, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. I hope everybody's ready and excited. You know that excitement when you're waiting for the new Marvel movie to come out, the new Spider-Man, the new Batman, and you're just excited for the screen to start its showing. And same is true if we are Christians, we should be excited about the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Are you excited? Yes. All right. I hope uh, everybody is praying for Pastor Brian and his family, Haim. And I hope that uh, we're taking extra time because this is the very, uh, very important time to show our love and our support for the pastor here. You know, his life, um, he's been using his, um, his strength to be praying and preparing for the Word of God that he will share to us. And now he, they're um, having these challenges. And I hope that everybody's taking part in prayer. Amen? 
And I hope that you will continue to include and um, will be uh, responsive to the responsibilities that will be assigned to us and that we will be faithful continuing in working in the ministry. That's why this afternoon our topic will be ministry reminders. If you have your Bibles with you, would you turn it in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. I think you have it printed on the bulletin, so maybe we can read it responsibly. I will read verse 1, and together we are going to read verse 8. You're going to be reading verse 2. All right, I'm going to read verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. First of all, the instant is reason, our own for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful afternoon that you've given us. I pray, Lord, that your name will be glorified. And I pray that uh, open our eyes and our hearts as we're going to listen and that your Holy Spirit will move upon us tonight, uh, this afternoon. Bless us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I never get the chance to thank the church formally for praying for me, Kelsey, and Moriah. It's been a long time. I know, but yeah, now Moriah's three months already. And thank you, church, for your prayers. We really appreciate it and for the gifts and for the kind encouragement. And um, it's been two years, uh, almost two years now since me and Kels got married. So thank you very much for praying for us. And I discovered <laughs> that there's some lessons to learn when you're married, uh, when you, especially for newlywed couples. I understand now that marriage is psychological. <laughs> that one is psycho, one is logical. <laughs> and I understand now that marriage is a workshop. I work, she shops. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, man, you have to understand yeah. that, right? <laughs> so happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So that's a, those are just jokes, but just to cheer us up this afternoon. But the topic this afternoon would be about ministry. Take note of the first three words there in the chapter. I charge thee therefore. All right, this afternoon, we are going to be touching topics today that are sometimes becoming strange in the church pulpits these days. Amen? Sometimes um, we are like the verse number three, that we are having itching ears. You know what itching ears means? It means that we have no longer... We no longer want the simple truth or sound doctrine. Instead, we want entertainment only. My friend, dearly beloved, the church is not a place for entertainment. Amen? The church is the place where we preach the truth. We preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. So if you are here this afternoon for entertainment, this is not the place. We are here to glorify the Lord God only. Amen? Amen. All right. For those of you who knew this lesson maybe from back back again before then this is a reminder but for those who haven't heard about this then this is nice for us to be educated to the word of god all right are you ready this afternoon Amen. god is charging us god is reminding us this afternoon things to do in the ministry number one first thing to do in the ministry study the bible study the bible how is your bible study we have our own uh, our group Bible studies, but how about the personal Bible study? Bible reading is one thing. Bible study is another thing. 
how is your Bible study? If you are a student, if you are a professor, if you are an engineer, a business person, a workman, you, you, you should be studying the Bible. If you are a housewife, you should be studying the Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman not, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's like digesting the word of God. Amen? It's like word for word, understanding what the word of God means, what the word of God is trying to tell me. Now, you cannot invest in the truth if you do not know the truth. Hmm? You cannot be approved by God if you do not know what He says. So do not be ignorant. Study the Bible. Amen? Amen. Do not study your cell phones. Hmm? Sometimes we are spending more time with cell phone than more time with the Word of God. Am I right? I'm guilty about it. <laughs> Huh? Sometimes we have so many time to go to our friends, our social media, our other, other games. But you know what? These things might deviate your attention from spiritual things. These things are good. These are blessings. But make sure you use them properly. Amen? Study the Word of God. Study the Bible. That's number one. Number two. Are you still there? I'm going to preach fast if people are responding. Amen? Amen. All right. Number two, ready? Read. Win people for Christ. Win people for Jesus Christ. According to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is what? A tree of life. And what's the last part? He that winneth souls is wise. The question is, are you winning souls for Christ? You know what? Soul winning is the bread and butter of the ministry. If you do not win souls to Christ, then are we going to expect people to come here and be added to the church? What is the great, great, great commission that Jesus Christ gave to the disciples? Go ye therefore, teach, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, have done Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe, to do according what is written therein. Are you winning souls? for Jesus Christ. That's why it's called Great Commission. It is not just given to the pastor. The Great Commission was given when it is a church event. The 12 disciples were present there. So the question is, are you winning souls for Jesus Christ? In Mark chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, it says, And Jesus said unto them, Come after me. He is talking to the disciples. I will make you become fishers of men. And straightway they pursued their nets and followed him. The original occupation of the disciples of Jesus Christ was fishermen. But when Jesus Christ told him, stop catching fish. Now you ought to catch men. Amen? The answer to every problem when you're involved in the ministry, whether it be personal, financial, emotional, and spiritual, the answer to it is soul winning. And according to Psalm chapter 125, if we're going to look on the next slide, Psalm 125, verses 5 to 6, They that sow in tears shall what? Reap in joy. This is talking about the soul winners. These are talking about the type of Apostle Paul who are really investing to the Word of God, who are really investing, going out, sharing the gospel, preaching the gospel to everyone. And what? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth, weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. Now, if you're going to sow and go through many difficulties, remember, the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Serving the Lord, yes, I know it's not easy. But you know what? Great is the reward waiting. The more difficult you go through, the greater blessings you're going to enjoy. Don't forget that God has prepared you for your difficulties. It's written on 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. That what? That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ Jesus. So study your Bible. Amen? Amen. Number two, win souls for Jesus Christ. And number three, are you still there? Amen. Number three, pray for power. 
you must know that power belongeth unto the Lord. The power does not come from politics or wealth. No, sir. No, ma'am. Power belongeth unto God. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says there, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Ye shall be what? Witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are you witnessing in your school, in your family, in your workplace? That's what it means. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, where they are right now, the next city, the next place, Judea, and Samaria, the bigger part, and unto the uttermost part of the world. This power belongeth unto God. And once we pray for power, we make sure we pray for wisdom. In James chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. The question is, sometimes it's so hard to do things. You know why? Because we don't ask for God's wisdom. We tend to do it in our own capacity. But you know what? Us without God, we're nothing. But God without man, He's still God. That's why we need the Lord in our lives. Amen? Ask God for wisdom. And pray that God will give you boldness. So many times we have the chance to minister. So many times we have opportunities to do ministry and serve God. But so many times we are... We are, we are called by God, but we do not want to respond. We do not want to obey. We have so many excuses. Hmm? That's why we need to pray for boldness. Lord, give me the boldness. You do not learn play, prayer in your classroom, in the school. No, we learn prayer inside our closet. How's your personal, private time with the Lord? Are you praying to Him? Are you having your quiet time with God? Or is your quiet time with God so quiet that nothing's happening anymore? Hmm? You will ask sometimes, you need, sometimes we need to ask boldness because you know we will find us ourselves that we already have the backsliding heart. Be careful. Before Christians leave the church, it starts in the heart. They already have that thing creeping in their heart that they don't have the appetite for the word of God. They have so many cares outside that God is not their priority anymore. It's easy to serve God when everything is easy. But when you face a choice, that's where the real test comes. When everything is so difficult, when you're faced with a choice between God and money, are you going to choose God still? Between God and maybe your relationship, are you going to still choose God first? With God and your travel or tours, are you still going to choose God first? But good thing, when we have the backsliding heart, we can come to the Lord in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? What a promise! That when we come to the Lord, He is faithful and just to forgive us. But you know what? We, God will not forgive us sometimes because we are not confessing to Him. So make sure you come to the Lord, go back to the Lord, keep on that faith, keep on the burning desire in your heart as you serve God. Now, why do you need to confess? Like, Jai, why did you touch this topic? Because you know what? Repentance is the cure to any waywardness. Some of us are like, we're not sure anymore more where to go. Like, am I going to church? Am I going to serve God? Or maybe I'll just do these things. It makes me happy. Hmm? But you know what? Confessing it to God it will be the cure to way waywardness. It is the medicine to backsliding. It is the therapy for cold feet. Make sure you come to the Lord and confess it. Number four. Number one. Study. Number two. Aha! We're going to fail the test here. Number three. Pray. Pray for power. And number four, preach the word of God. Amen? Amen. Preach. preach. Do not preach your opinion. I do not want to preach my opinion. Do not preach our philosopher's opinion. Or do not preach the, the principles of your teachers. Preach the
The Word of God. Amen? Amen. Only the Word of God. There's a time to, to give our stories to people. There's a time to, to share our life-changing moments. But, some, but, but you know what? Something is happening if you share the Word of God because there is power in the Word of God. When you share the gospel, there is power there. According to 2 Timothy 4, verse 2 to 5, this is what we read. Preach the word. Be instant, in season and out of season. That's why I always try to see to it that I have devotionals because sometimes I'm faced with an opportunity to preach. Like when we went back to the Philippines, I'm just thinking that, oh, we're going to have vacation only. I did not prepare anything. But on the spot, my father like, Jai, you're going to preach. I preached in my father's church for three times. I preached in my brother's church for two times. And I could not say no because my father trained us be instant in season and out of season. You should be prepared. What happens when you preach? You should have the reproof, the rebuke, the exhortation of, with all long suffering and doctrine. Hmm? So many preachers these, these days, they don't want to reprove and rebuke anymore. That's why everybody, the world is talking about sin, and sin is getting louder. How about the Christians? How are we standing with, with the Word of God? Sad to say, sometimes the world is so loud about the sin, and Christians are participating, shouting about sin. It's getting terrible. But we as Christians, we have a responsibility to stand on the Word of God. Preach the Word. We must preach against sin. Because if we do not preach against sin, do not expect salvation. Because for you to, to share someone the gospel of Jesus Christ, they must know that they are sinners first before they come to know that they need repentance to the Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ is the only way to wash our sins. That's why we have to preach the word. Amen? When you go out and you hang out with your friends, are you mostly talking about gossip, about about interests, about makeup, about shoes, or are you preaching the word to them? We have the responsibility. Um, when I taught in Bible school, I taught them three types of preaching. The preaching number one, you do evangelistic preaching. What do you do when you do evangelistic preaching? You preach to win souls. Number two type of preaching, the preaching for exhortation. What is exhortation? You preach to encourage and stir up Christians to be faithful to the Lord. So when you are being encouraged by the preacher, that is called exhortation. And the last type of preaching is expository. When you expose, ex doing the expository type of preaching, you are teaching the people to build the church. As you give people encouragement to build their lives to Jesus Christ. Hmm? Of course, sometimes we preach about blessing, God's goodness. That's great. We need that. But we need also the challenge to serve God faithfully. Because sometimes these challenges are being strange in the pulpits these days. That's why Christians are like, oh, I serve God, it's okay. I don't serve God, it's okay. Because they're not hearing the challenge that we ought to serve God. We are saved to serve, not to just be a preservative in the church. Amen? Our theme is salt and light. Are you, are you being a salt and light to your workplace, to your family, to your co-workers, to your friends? Are you making a difference? Are they seeing Jesus through your life? Preach the word of God. And number five, we need to stay away from temptation. Stay away from temptation. There are so plenty of temptations that will come to Christians. We are always tempted to put God at the bottom of our priorities, which is so sad. So many people are not here today because what? God is not the number one in their priority. Hmm? Because if you truly say you love God, it must be obvious. If I say I love my wife, it should be obvious, right? Amen? Uh, actions speak louder than words. What do you think if I say, Kels, I love you, but you know what? I don't want to see you for five years. You think that's love? Same is true with God. If you say you love God, then you must have that desire. You must have that burning, burning passion of serving Him and wanting to be with Him. It should be obvious. Do you think it's obvious that you love God if you're on and off the church? Like, I love you today, I don't love you tomorrow, I love you today, maybe next time. We should be consistent, amen? Be careful how you treat God, how you are committed to God, that manifests in how you're doing your love life. Hello? 
how you're doing your love life because if you love the Lord whom you are you cannot see then it's easy for you to love this person now that you can see him or her that's why I my first checklist in, in choosing a wife to marry is she faithful to the Lord is she consistent to the Lord if not whether you're beautiful whether you're the sexiest person in the world no next contestant <laughs> Because faithfulness to the Lord, I believe that it's so easy that other things will follow if you prioritize the Lord. In 1 John 2, 6, he said that, He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. If you say you belong to God, you should be following God's footsteps. Do you think if, if God is here right now, if Jesus is here right now, and his friends invite him to go to Mega World to watch, um, what's the movie of Tom Cruise now? Top Gun. Top Gun versus going to church. Do you think, what would Jesus choose? Going to Top Gun or going to church? I do believe Jesus will go to church. Then follow Jesus' footsteps. Amen? When I went to the company outing this week, so you know company outings, it's a great time for the co-workers to have a happy happy time <laughs> and having all the meeting and just games and fun time but you know what my bosses top bosses they said my other co-workers don't offer Jai any drinks he doesn't want any alcohol you know why because long time ago I refused because why I know I need to stand as a Christian in my own way I want to be the salt and light of course I can buy any alcoholic drinks if I want to, but I want to show my testimony. That's why I choose not to. If there's a chance for me to show my Christianity by standing up to something, I will do it. And after that, many co-workers come to me, Jai, why are you not drinking? I mean, uh, for health reason, you don't need, I mean, I, I don't like that, but you know, my, my top bosses said that, oh, in your resume, you said you're a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian, right? And I, yes. And because of that stand, many co-workers became curious, like, oh, where do you go to church? I told them, I'm going to Honore. Like, do you want to come? And some of my co-workers went here before. And because of that, some of my co-workers, we shared the gospel to them. Some accepted, but some are attending the other churches now, but some refused. But I praise God, because my job is to share. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. I, my job is not to save them. Their job is to say yes or no to the gospel. It's on them now. But my job is to share it to them. Amen? We have a responsibility. We should not be like, um, what you call that, complacent and not doing anything. Hmm? That's why this afternoon, if you think, oh, I don't know Jesus personally. I don't have that. Uh, assurance of salvation then you should accept Jesus Christ in your heart because you know what it's really hot right now it's summertime that is nothing compared to the lake of fire in hell if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and Jesus is the only way to heaven now number six oh but before we go to number six we should stay away to temptations Sometimes we have the temptation of pride in our lives that you keep on telling, oh, it's because of me I have this money, it's because of me I have this house, because of my talents I have this nice position in my job. Be careful. Once God will test you, like take all those things away, then who are you now? It is not yours. God entrusted these things to you. Hmm? And be careful that don't allow those blessings be the hindrances for you to serve God. Is the air you're breathing right now belongs to you? Is it yours? When the corona happened, can you control the situation? Can anybody control it? It took us a while. God is showing His power. Are we listening? Are we sensitive? Hmm? Stay away from the temptation of pride. So many Christians are all are sometimes so arrogant with how they look. Of course, there's two people in the world, the created beautifully and the uh, created only. I'm created only. So you praise God if you're created beautifully, if you stand next to me, you become more beautiful. Amen? Imagine if we are created all beautifully, then there is no beautiful. Because everybody is equal. So praise God we have creatures like me who are just created. Amen? Amen. <laughs> 
It's just a joke. So we should be avoiding the temptations of pride. Stay away from the temptation of laziness. You know what? Our body is designed to be lazy. If you do not eat, you don't have the desire, oh, I don't want to work, I'm hungry. But after you eat, you will say, oh, I want to sleep now. I'm full. So we are designed to be lazy, amen? But you should be avoiding the temptation of laziness. Hmm? And ladies, or young men, you should not, you do not have to disobey God or lower your standards just to be attractive. Hello? Amen? You do not have to disobey God just to attract someone. Huh? And be careful because what you attract is what you get. Me as a, as a single guy before, if I'm going to try to attract girls because of sexuality or because of physical attraction, then I'm going to get that. But if I choose to try to attract someone because of morality, because of decency, then most likely that's what I'm going to get. So where are you exposing yourself right now? Hmm? It's your choice. But the Bible is saying, stay away from the temptation. Now, number six, and this would be second to the last. It says, be what you should be. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. So these were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Now, when you got saved, one way or another, you are influencing a brethren to Christ. Whether it's a good influence or bad influence, you are influencing someone. Now the question is, are you, do you, are, are you the person now who you should be, whom the Lord wants you to be? Hmm? If you are a leader, be a leader, amen? Leadership starts with servanthood. A good leader is a good follower. And you cannot lead by standing from behind. You should lead by standing in front, amen? And as a, as a husband, as a leader of the family, I, I, I should be the leader in giving. Before I pray for what to give my wife and my baby, what clothes to buy, what, what food to buy, I make sure to it that I'm the leader in segregating the things that are for the Lord. Are you prioritizing God in your finances? Hello? That's part of the biblical doctrines. Are you a leader in giving? Are you a leader in prayer? How long is your prayer when you pray to God? When you say, oh, Jai, I pray seven times a day. Why? Because I eat seven times a day. Wow! Why seven times? Morning, jong yok, uh, jong jim, midnight snack, morning snack, afternoon snack, and maybe some extra tea time. <laughs> so before you, before you eat, Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. Seven times a day. <laughs> no, we should be praying earnestly. Pray without ceasing, according to First Thessalonians. Be a leader in soul winning. Hmm? When I was assigned in the small group there, I made a personal goal. Lord, if I'm going to be a leader in the small group there, I should make sure that I'm making a personal goal of winning people to Christ. Because what's the sense of me talking about sharing the gospel if I myself am not doing it? Amen? If you're a leader, make sure you practice what you preach. If you're pre preaching about giving, make sure you're doing it. If you're preaching about soul winning, make sure you're doing it. If you're preaching about faithfulness, if you're pre preaching about consistency, make sure you're doing it. Because there's going to be a disconnect if you're going to be saying these things and your life is not accomplishing. It. Hmm? And last but not the least. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Let's read it. Last, number seven. On the slide... So that you were... Oh, no. <laughs> Number seven on the slide. Are uh, we there? Okay. Next, next slide. It's still loading. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Number seven. Ready? Go. Never, Never quit until, until you die or until or Jesus, Jesus Christ God. will come. When you're serving God, whether it be singing, whether it be arranging chairs, whether it be the welcome group, whether it be the printing group, whether it be the children's ministry, make sure that you will never ever quit until Jesus come or until you die. So many Christians today, they will come to me and say, Jai, I used to be a leader in our church before. I used to be a choir member. I used to be a worship leader. I used to be Sunday school teacher. We should avoid being a used to be Christian. Amen? We should say, now I am serving Christ. Now I am doing the ministry. 
If God gives you the opportunity to serve, then you need to say to the Lord, Lord, I will serve you until I die. Repeat these words on, uh, with me today. Here am I, Lord, send me. Ready, go. Here am I, Lord, send me. Le uh, men, ready, go. Here am I, send me. Ladies, ready, go. Here am I, Lord. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Uno got excited. <laughs> it's okay. Ready, go. Here Send me. That's in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, this is the question of the Lord, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And what's the answer? Here am I, send me. Some of us, we think like, oh, Lord, you will come beside the Lord. Lord, Oh yes, Lord, who are we going to send? No, it doesn't operate that way. God is the one asking questions. Our responsibility is to just respond. Amen? Amen. We don't go near the Lord and Lord, Oh Lord, I think this brother is capable. You, you should send him. No, don't point fingers to other people. You should say, Here am I, Lord, send me. Amen? Amen? Amen. Oh, well, uh, it seems like nobody wants to be sent by the Lord. <laughs> Why are you afraid? You know what? Many times we are so scared to act on it. But you know, one thing for sure, for a very long time, of course I'm a pastor's kid, but that is not a guarantee that I am serving God with all my heart. I remember one time, I was 15 years old, I knelt down in front of the altar and I told the Lord, Lord, if you're calling me to do the ministry, any ministry, I will try to do it with all my heart. I will make sure that I will be the best in that position, whether it be arranging chairs, fixing the wires, I don't care. I will just do my best. I will do it for you. Here, my Lord, send me. And as I'm doing that, help me, Lord, to be an influence and an encourager to other people. Help me to win my lost friends. Hmm? There will be hard times in life, but never, ever quit. You know what? While doing the service to the Lord, you will find that you have that heavenly sense of fulfillment that you can never explain. As you serve God, you will enjoy it, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. For our last verse this afternoon as we close, I hope everybody will realize this verse. Last verse, please. Next slide. Let's read. Oh, this is second to the last verse. Let's read. Everybody, say ready, go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation to everyone. So you must be not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed to tell my co-workers I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed to tell me, oh, I don't do that. I'm a Christian. Because the world is getting louder when they scream about sin. We Christians should be louder when it, when it comes to our faith. Amen? We should not be drawn. We should not be, be drowned by the worldly standards. Hmm? And for the last verse, we should realize this. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a promise that anyone who calls on God in faith will be saved. But this is the, the situation in verse 14. How will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And the last question, how shall they hear without you? Do you get it? How shall they hear without you? This is your job. This is our job. And how shall you preach except you be sent? That's why their response is, Here am I, Lord. Send me. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. Serving the Lord is the sweetest position ever in this world. We have maybe 70, 80, 90 years here in the world. Life is short. Choose to enjoy it. Or, eternity is long. Prepare for it. Do you like that? Amen? Life is short. Enjoy it. Or, eternity is long. Prepare for it. Every head's bow, Every eye's close. We are going to close in prayer. Please close your eyes. Bow our head. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Now, Lord, I don't know what's going on in the minds and hearts of everyone here who listen to, the, to your word. I pray, Lord, that you speak to us, that the message will enable us to act 
on being used in the ministry. Help our lives, Lord, to be an instrument of grace that people will be able to come to know you. That you use us. Give us boldness to preach your word. Give us boldness to share the gospel. That our friends, our family members, our co-workers, our classmates will, be, will come to know you as their personal Savior. Be with us, Lord. I know it's hard, but help us, Lord, to be, encouraged, to be an encouragement to everyone, to us this afternoon. As we continue in our service, guide us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jair. Now, let's uh, sing, give thanks as we, uh, as we do the offering. Uh, let's go with our voice. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks. service with Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of fire and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. 